Hi everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. <clears throat> this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. We're gonna be talking about a disease today and that's big, the big one, cancer. <clears throat> As second largest killer of Americans in the United States behind heart disease. And the rate at which it's climbing, it could soon be the number one killer of Americans in, in, uh, in the yeah, yeah, Americans in the U.S., <laughs> people are living in the United States. So let's jump right into the study. I'll go ahead and put the study up on the, uh, com in the comments section. So <clears throat> you can look it up. I'll actually pull it up on the screen, too, as well. Um, so those of you watching on the screen can see it as soon as it pops up. And there it is. So <clears throat> this study actually combined three different factors, uh, vitamin D3, omega-3, and exercise. So three different factors. And they looked at them uh, separately, uniquely, by themselves, then in uh, just two of the factors, and then all three of the factors. And it was a cumulative effect, which is really cool because sometimes it doesn't doesn't work out that way it just uh matters only to a certain degree and then it doesn't uh, promote health anymore but these when you added the more you added the better the cumulative effect and lower the risk of cancer <clears throat> so let's uh look at what the uh study says combined vitamin d omega-3 fatty acids and a simple home exercise program or chef uh, may reduce cancer risk from uh, among active and healthy adults aged 70 and older. Okay, so let's break down who was in this study. Uh, it was a pretty good sized study, uh, uh, 2,157 participants. So it was a good sized study, not a small 10, 20 person study. Um, and they uh, followed them for a while too, which is good. <clears throat> The average age was 75 years of age, but they were all generally healthy, they were all active, and they were all largely vitamin D replete, meaning they had sufficient vitamin D3 levels already. Um, so it wasn't uh, an effect of uh, being vitamin D deficient or that they weren't active and they're seeing some good signs based on those. It was just actually stepping up the programs. Uh, giving higher dosages of vitamin D3, more increase in omega-3, and more activity level. So taking basically healthy, active uh, people over 70 and looking at them, it was about 60% women, about 40% men, <clears throat> and then a uh, follow-up over three years. So they looked at them and tracked them over three years to see who got cancer and who didn't. <clears throat> so for those in the vitamin D3 group, so looking at the single elements of each, uh, what did the vitamin D3? They had a 30% reduced risk of cancer rate in the study. Now that's pretty significant. 30% decreased risk in cancer is, is, a, is a good positive. So uh, a good reason probably to um, add vitamin D3 to your regular protocol if you're not already. Obviously we produce a vitamin D3. I've been searching for a vegan vitamin D3 that was actually pure. There was uh, several other vitamin D3s on the market uh, made from mushrooms or lichen, uh, but one, they weren't, uh, most of them weren't organic, and two, they weren't pure vitamin D3. Uh, they could have actually vitamin D2 in them, and vitamin D2 is actually shown to inhibit or even decrease the effects of, of vitamin D3. So it wasn't a great win situation for vegans up until just recently when Veg D3 came out. Veg D3 is actually the first 100% pure uh, vitamin D3 that is nothing but cholecalciferol. It's the identical vitamin D that's in our bloodstream. Um, and the same vitamin D that comes from animals too as well, except this is from organic algae. So it's one of the very first organic vitamin D3s on the market that is 100% pure and from algae. It's actually the first. So I was really excited to be able to bring this to market. It was one of the first brands to bring this to market uh, because I really wanted to have the best possible vegan 
vitamin D3, organic, vegan, 100% pure vitamin D3. All right, so 30% reduced risk in cancer. That's pretty amazing. I'm going to go ahead and take this down off the screen. And then they looked at omega-3s, and that had a 26% reduced risk of cancer. So that was pretty good. And exercise was a 24%. So all of those are really good, 24, 26, 30%, all in that range, roughly around uh, um, 26, 27% uh, average um, between the three. Okay, that was good. So when they combine two of the different uh, effects, uh, like when they combine, um, let's see, I'm reading it here, omega-3 plus vitamin D3, they found a 47%. So it jumped from 24, 25, 26%, all the way up to 47% when you combined vitamin D3 and omega-3 together. And of course, we produce what I consider the best uh, vegan omega-3 in the marketplace, actually the richest source of omega-3 of any plant in the world, and that's ahi flower. So um, what happens when they combined all three, though, omega-3, D3, and exercise? And this is what they found, a 61% reduced risk for getting cancer over that time period, over a three-year period. That's phenomenal. Uh, you see the cumulative effects, taking vitamin D3, taking omega-3, and then exercising. That's why I'm really focused on getting people to have the best optimal nutrition that they can get into their system through good whole food plant foods and then supplementing where, uh, where it can be an advantage to you. Using supplementation, just as the word means, supplementing a good, healthy, whole food plant-based diet. Now, when you do that, you're getting the nutrients from the plants, but you're getting the higher level of nutrition. Remember, these people were actually D sufficient, but when they added extra vitamin D, 2000 units per day of vitamin D3, they got an additional beneficial effect out of it. And that's where supplementation can come in. It's not just about getting maintenance dosages, enough to be sufficient to carry on normal functions. When you are in uh, older years, or if you are um, in high risk situations where the water isn't very good or the air isn't very good and you have exposure to toxins in the workplace or you're around people that smoke cigarettes or all these different elements, uh, if you do a lot of driving, if you work in stressful environments, these all can contribute to the risk of cancers. So when you look at those things, it's, it's important to get optimal amounts, not just sufficient amounts of nutrients, but optimal amounts because they can make a difference. So this was a case where people who had normal, healthy maintenance levels of vitamin D3 actually added 2000 units per day of vitamin D3, and they got significantly 30% lower risk of cancer. And when you combine that with taking omega-3 and exercise, 61% reduced risk of cancer. To me, that's what I really wanna do is try to get people in optimal states by using a healthy whole food plant-based diet and supplementation to get you into that level where you're getting all of the advantages that the body can get from these nutrients and exercise to protect your cells and reverse some of these things that we're exposed to in modern day era. Look, if we were out in nature getting lots of sunshine, breathing pure air and drinking pure, you know, pristine water out of a stream, yeah, cool, you wouldn't need supplementation at all. We're not there. We're indoors, we're not getting good sunlight, we're stressing out more than we've ever had in our lives. Uh, work stress, driving stress, uh, relationship stress, uh, uh, all kinds of stressors going on in our lives that just weren't really there. Um, we're not out in nature breathing air, pristine air anymore. It's just not the case. So I think we really need to step up our nutrition. And that's why I think there's a place for this. This study actually shows it very significantly. Just by taking vitamin D3, there's vegan D3s. We sell the only 
100% pure organic vegan D3 um, in the marketplace, which is Veg D3. That's in our vegan D3. And Omega-3, and we sell eye flower. I, I researched um, Omega-3s for the longest time before I found something I felt worthy to go to market, and it won the next award, the top supplement award in the United States for best new ingredient of the year. Eye flower oil is the richest source of Omega-3s of any plant on the planet. So this is really important to get this nutrition into you, get it in at proper dosages just by using the studies. You can take a look at the study, read it for yourself. It's an amazing study. But to make this even easier for you, I am going to offer a code for anybody watching. Uh, the code is, I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen. And you can use this code to um, get an additional discount on D3. Oops. Oh, that, that's a question for it, but here's the code. Use discount code at checkout for 15% off ahi flour and our vegan D3, which is a YT because it's a YouTube video, ahi flour, AF, and D3. So the code is YTAFD3. Write it down, or you can just stop the uh, video and play it, or and or play it back, and you can get apply this any time and get 15% off ahi flour and uh, and vegan D3. Um, so let's go ahead and put this up. Uh, uh, I've read that vitamin D3 should be combined with vitamin K. Okay, this is a sales technique. Um, this is marketing. This is not uh, the truth. Um, these uh, marketers are, I, I did a whole uh, video on why uh, you actually don't need, uh, most people don't need to supplement vitamin K. If you go out and have your blood levels tested and you are deficient, well then sure you can supplement with vitamin K. But I, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the studies. Let me go ahead and find it real quick. Uh, you can check out my video on vitamin K2. I'll go ahead and throw the research right on the screen for you so you can see it for yourself. Um, let's see. Sorry, it's taking a little bit for me to find the, the actual study. Actually, I have a bunch of studies. Um, so here it is in a nutshell. Uh, I'll put the studies up in the comments section. Um, but there are bacteria. All right, let's look at the uh, supplements of vitamin K2. <clears throat> vitamin K2 is produced from vitamin K1 in our gut. So clean green protein, dark greens, uh, but let's take clean green protein. Clean green protein in just one scoop has 1100% of the vitamin K1 your body needs. 1100. That's 11 times more vitamin K one than the body needs. Our body needs vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. So the big question was, okay, well, vitamin in certain studies, early studies, <clears throat> vitamin K was shown to uh, poorly convert to vitamin K2. What they were looking at was omnivores on the standard American diet, which is horrible and extremely low in fiber. Most standard American diet consumers, most omnivores are not getting sufficient um, amounts of fiber. So fiber feeds the bacteria that actually do the conversion of vitamin K1 into monoquinones or vitamin K2. There's a bunch of forms of vitamin K2. So bacteria actually synthesize K2 and they require fiber. So if you look in nature, 
anything that's dark green, high amounts of vitamin K1, high amounts of fiber. So you're getting the all the K1, more of the K1 than you need, and you're getting the fiber to feed those bacteria so that they can convert vitamin K1 into vitamin K2. So if you are consuming dark greens <clears throat> or even one scoop of clean green protein per day, you are probably getting way more vitamin K2 than your body can ever uh, need. So let's take a look at how they produce vitamin K2. So vitamin K2 is generally produced by natto. What is natto? Natto is the fermentation of soy. <laughs> okay, so they're taking soy and taking the bacteria that's in our gut and adding it to it and forming vitamin K2. Guess what happens when you consume soy? It mixes with the same bacteria in your gut and forms vitamin K2, as well as all of the vitamin K1. Uh, 70 to 90% of the vitamin K that we get comes from plants, right? So all our body is getting all the K1 that we need to convert to K2. You just need a healthy mic uh, microbiome. And to have a healthy microbiome, you need to have healthy amounts of fiber in it. So vitamin K2 deficiencies they found really is only about antibiotic use. So if you've had a round of antibiotics, you've probably wiped out the bacteria that actually do the uh, conversion from vitamin K1 into vitamin K2 in your gut. Our body does this all by itself. I'm gonna go ahead and put up some of these uh, studies in here so that you can read them for yourself. So this is the first one, uh, how K2 is produced, uh, that uh, this evidence suggests that bacterial synthesis of uh, uh, vitamin K2, particularly in the end, is pretty much all that we need. Um, it, it contributes to the vitamin K requirements. As a matter of fact, that vitamin K is so plentiful that our body excretes vitamin K2 because we produce too much of it. Um, so our liver helps regulate uh, vitamin K2 as well. Um, there's plenty more studies, but just check out my uh, video on vitamin K2. I guess I can put that video up there on the screen too as well. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel at Clean Machine Online and then um, grab the vitamin K uh, video and watch it. It's a quick video, but I go through all of the research and why uh, you probably, if you are on e eating um, dark greens on a daily basis, you're probably getting way more vitamin K2. Your body can store vitamin K2 as well. So um, no need to just keep taking it all the time. Um, I'm having trouble finding the vitamin K study. Let's see. Uh, the YouTube video. And, all right. There it is. Okay. And I'll grab the link for you. And then... it up on the comment section so that you guys can check out this too as well. And there's the link. You can just click on that and you can find out all of the uh, studies on vitamin K2 and why you really don't even need vitamin K2. Uh, vitamin K2 is mostly a marketing effort. It's fear factor, trying to get people scared that they're not getting sufficient vitamin K2. And uh, the, the research really shows, and I go over all of the research, about eight different studies showing that vitamin K2 is more than abundantly made by our bacteria. The only times you may be deficient in vitamin K2 uh, is after a round of antibiotics. 
antibiotics can wipe out the bacteria that, uh, um, and here, here, I'll just actually show the, the study there. Put it right up on the screen. Vitamin uh, antibiotics are the main reason for vitamin K2 deficiency because the antibiotics are killing the bacteria that do the conversion of vitamin K1 into vitamin K2. And I'll show you that right on the screen. Here it is. So re reduction of vitamin two concentrations in the human liver. That's where the vitamin K2 is stored and where it's converted into uh, MK7, MK10, MK14, all the different types of monoquinones uh, that the body uses. So uh, the supplements that you buy are vitamin K2, usually just MK7. The body uses a lot of different forms uh, their MK and a number of forms of monoquinones or vitamin K2. So there's a bunch of different forms, not just that uh, monac uh, MK, uh, K2, uh, MK7. Um, so reports of K deficiency is usually in occurring in patients receiving broad spectrum antibiotics and uh, indirectly suggest the vitamin K2 produced in the gut uh, microflora may be uh, utilized by the host. So it's it's showing that uh, once you wipe out the bacteria in the gut, they no longer are able to produce that. Um, okay, and here's here's the final one that I'll put up on vitamin K2 because this one kind of set as it point blank. And I'll put it up on the screen too as soon as it's loading here in a second. Okay, study. This study is called Vitamin K2 Holds Promise for Alzheimer's Prevention, which is also an important thing, uh, and treatment. And this was published in 2021. So reinforcing, quote, reinforcing the findings above, the above findings, one study suggests the amount of vitamin K2 synthesized in the gut far exceeds human nutritional requirements, even if only a small fraction is actually absorbed. It's still more than sufficient to provide all the vitamin K. If you are one, getting good sources of vitamin K1. And again, greens, dark greens are so high in vitamin K1, as long as you're just getting a serving or two of greens in a day, you're good to go on your vitamin K1, which is giving you more than enough for your gut to actually, the bacteria in the gut to actually uh, uh, transform that vitamin K1 into K2. So I, I'm not a, I don't see, yes, you can go out. If you've had antibiotics, definitely you can get tested for your vitamin uh, K2 um, uh, levels. And if they're low, then definitely supplement or just start building back up your gut. Uh, eat more fiber, eat more dark greens, including clean green protein. It's got 35% of your entire day's worth of fiber, plus 1,100% of the vitamin K1. That's 11 times the vitamin K that you actually need. So way more sufficient that you need. Vitamin K2 is generally not an issue for most people on a healthy whole food plant-based diet or those even just basically getting a salad or dark greens in on a daily basis. Um, so there generally aren't much issues for vitamin K. This, this idea that we need vitamin K2 K with vitamin D3 is, is true, but the, the assumption that you must get them from supplements is not true. Vitamin K2 is usually more than sufficient um, in the gut. And you can see that right here where it says on this, the last line, uh, the amount of vitamin K2 synthesized in the gut far exceeds human nutritional requirements, even if only a fraction is absorbed. So there's generally not issues there as long as you're consuming a healthy whole food plant-based diet. And if you are not, please consider doing so, so that you don't run any risks, health risks. Um, so that's where this comes from. Uh, almost all of the vitamin K1 comes from plants. 
animals have vitamin K2 in it, but they don't have a generally good source of vitamin K1 like plants do. Our body uses both vitamin K1 and vitamin K2, but remember all the vitamin K1 can convert to vitamin K2. So as long as you're getting plenty of vitamin K1 from plants, you're most likely getting vitamin K2 in sufficient amounts, more than sufficient amounts as well, based on the research. Not my word, not my conjecture, it's the actual research. Check out the video on vitamin K2. I go over all the studies and why uh, problems or issues with vitamin K2 are more about microbiome dis, uh, dysfunction, where you have uh, rounds of antibiotics or something like this that interferes with the healthy gut process. Um, so there are people that definitely uh, could benefit from vitamin K2 temporarily until they get their gut healthy again and get, uh, get some more a good source of dark greens and fiber into their diet. But that's that's where it should be. So now for vitamin D3, for sure, most of us are spending way too much time indoors, are not spending enough time outdoors. Many of us are living in Northern climates where even if you're getting direct sunlight outdoors, it does not even convert to vitamin D3. The conversion from outdoor sunlight because of the curvature of the earth and the sunlight in the winter bouncing off them, then you do not need, uh, 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 you do need to take supplemental vitamin D3. Uh, people with darker skin, the higher the melanin in your skin, uh, so Hispanics with darker skin need higher amounts of vitamin D3. Uh, people who are uh, black, who have higher amounts of diet, the darker the skin, basically, the higher amounts of melanin, the higher amounts of vitamin D3. As you age, as you get older, the older you are, the higher amounts of vitamin D3. So talk with your doctor about the levels of vitamin D3 that are right for you. There's great research out on it. Our dosage is based on uh, getting everyone into optimal levels, whether you're carrying extra body fat, whether you're black or Hispanic, uh, whether you're living in a northern requirement. This is a one size fits all, and it'll get everybody into optimal range. And has been clinically proven, published human study showing it taking people from deficient to sufficient in just seven days, seven days to sufficiency. That's really important for immune health, for heart health, for bone health, uh, for brain health, so much important things. Vitamin D is actually a hormone, not truly a vitamin. Um, so it plays a big role in lots of different functions in the body. Um, so you can get your vitamin K2 from the plants. You do not have to take a supplement of vitamin K2 with that. You know, I, I'm big on supplements when and where they're appropriate. And when you, there are things like probiotics, general probiotics, I don't take, and I don't believe anybody really needs to take. I think they're a waste of money, to be honest. So I'm not to pro all supplements. I think there are supplements that can make a difference that have true clinical human published studies behind it, showing health benefits. That's what I focus on. Um, Yes, there are certain probiotics for certain people that when taken can have a therapeutic effect, but those are very particular. I'm talking about just general broad use of you know, broad spectrum antibi uh, you know, um, antibiotics, probiotics. If you are getting a good source of prebiotic fiber in your diet, those probiotics can enter your body in so many different ways. Um, <laughs> That's why uh, probiotics can be replenished so quickly in the human digestive tract from storage in our body, uh, in the pancreas, to uh, breathing and eating. Everything we touch and put in our mouth and stuff like that is loaded with these probiotics. <laughs> They're everywhere. So the body can replenish them very easily. Are there good published human clinicals on specific probiotics that might have therapeutic applications? Yes. And for those, I think there are, but that's for the individual person. If you have a certain condition, a disease state, then talk to your doctor about certain probiotics that might be helpful for you. But general use probiotics, I, I think it's silly. You look, we have 40 trillion probiotics in our gut, 40 trillion, over 400 species. You're talking about 8 billion or 10 billion, even 100 billion. That's a 
fraction of what's actually in your gut. You're talking about eight, 10, 12 strains. We have 400 strains in our body. To think that that's actually gonna do much of an impact is kind of silly. So there's definitely some supplements. Vitamin K2, I don't think is necessary for the vast majority of people unless you've taken um, antibiotics. Uh, but vitamin D3, vitally important. About 90% of the population of the United States has been shown in studies to be um, insufficient or even deficient in uh, vitamin D3. And that's because we're indoors. We're just not getting the sunlight that we used to. And that's where most of our vitamin D3 conversion comes from. Yes, there's vitamin D3 in animal products, but you do not have to get them from animals. And we supply a vegan version of that. The first 100% pure uh, vegan vitamin D3 from organic algae. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, again, here's the uh, here's the code. I'll put it up on the screen again. There you go. You can use this discount code at checkout for 15% off your ahi flower and vegan D3. Y T A F D3. So that's YT for YouTube, AF for ahi flower, D3 for D3. Get 15% off. I want you to combine these two. Remember, this study showed D3, omega-3, and exercise, 61% reduction in cancer risk. That's what I want for you. That's why I share these studies. Help you improve uh, your overall health. Live prosperous. Enjoy life to the fullest and not have to suffer through uh, cancers, at least lowering your risk of that. So that's all we can do is, uh, is to get <laughs> as much of a lowered risk as possible based on the real published human research and nice studies like this, which use control groups, which used a large amount of people and, uh, and took basically healthy people, not people that were uh, overweight or obese or out of shape or inactive and because that skews the results for sure. But this was actually an active, healthy people who were already deemed sufficient. So hope you enjoyed this study. If you do, please share and like, give it a thumbs up. And we'll be back next week with more research and good things to learn about and share. Check out my Facebook page too. That's Jeff Palmer, G-E-O-F-F, -F, Palmer on Facebook. I'm posting new studies and research all the time. Check it out. Improve your health. Live healthy and prosper. Thanks, everyone.